All right. So tonight's trainer talk is supposed to be about cooperative care. And I had just a couple of easy questions for people tonight. Um, first off is, what is the thing your dog hates the most? And Cindy, I'll let you start because you were kind of already talking about that a little bit in the intro. So, Well, Nick hates his feet. He's not a fan of having his face shaved. But he absolutely hates anything done with his feet, which is not good for a poodle because you have to trim, you have to shave the feet, and you have to, and you have to grind the nails. So to decrease the stress on the feet, we do the um, the um, scratch pad with him, where he scratches his nails right. down, and that has decreased everybody's stress. Azul tolerates the nails, although he doesn't really like it. Funny thing is, he hates, like, I have some of the musher's secret to protect against the paw pads in the winter, and he hates that more than having his nails done. What he hates the most is bath time. He just hates standing in the shower area. I can't get him to go in there for anything willingly, and I pretty much just have to Tell him he has to stay there, otherwise he's constantly trying to escape. Well, Nick's not too bad with the bath. He doesn't like it, but he tolerates it. But he's been getting a weekly bath um, almost every week since he was a puppy. Right, and see, Azul got a couple early on to make him not hate it, and he didn't mind it so much then. But he's got some of, like, the softest, most puppyish fur mm -hmm. that he really only gets a bath maybe two to three times a year because just good brushing and it all comes out. And then, you know, during the summer months, he's in the lake or playing in the sprinkler and just the water is enough to keep him clean. Thankfully, we've got really clean water around here in our lakes and whatnot. But so all summer long, he doesn't get a bath. And then when he needs one in the winter, he's like, mom, I hate you. Mm -hmm. It looks like Ashlyn has the same issue I have, which is nails. I was just going to ask her what was Lily's, and then I looked up and saw it in the comments. So, yeah, nails is actually probably one of the most common things I've heard. Me and too. I will admit that with previous dogs, I didn't always take a force-free approach to it. Um, when we first got Cam and he needed it really bad, we didn't necessarily handle it force-free, although, again, he doesn't love it, but they both will gladly lay there and tolerate it mm -hmm. and just, you know, they'll hand me the paw I want and not try to pull it away. Sometimes Cam will pull away the back paws, but that's more of a tickle response usually because the hair gets between his toes, but... um. I think that's what Nick's thing is, the vibration of the clippers, because he'll let me handle his paws with no problem. And he actually loves using the scratch pad because that means treats are coming. Yeah. See, treats aren't enough for Azul for it. And I have yet to find like the right motivator. I even tried to lick Matt in the shower. Yeah, and I put that in the shower and it didn't work. Yeah, no, he didn't want anything to do with it. We tried peanut butter on the shower wall. No, that didn't help. I tried um, spam in a squeeze. Like, you know, those little uh -huh. silicone squeeze things that you can get to carry your toiletries in? Yep. So I pureed spam and I put that in the squeeze and Nick absolutely runs to the bathtub now, especially if he sees the Dremel come out. Um, <laughs> he'd because, much rather the bath first. Well, he'd much rather get the, um, the, um, it, the spam so that he can lick that because he pretty much gets the whole tube because I've been trying to teach him to lay on his back in the tub so he can float so that his cords will be the right shape. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no, Azul would never do that. <laughs> he'll play in the so, sprinkler, but, he'll play in the pool outside, but the shower at home, that's a no-no. <laughs> a whole different thing. Uh-huh. 
and he's never had a really horrible or bad experience there you know it's not like he's been tortured or i forced him into it or anything huge when he was younger you know it was never traumatic he just he doesn't like it he doesn't want to deal with it nope 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 he doesn't want to go in there <laughs> well i think part of nick's issue with getting clipped is i had older i had not as nice of clippers i had oster a5s and i switched to um what are they the um wall arcos okay. and they're lighter they don't get as hot and they don't pull as much and they're not as loud gotcha so they're better for everybody involved but i think that was part of the issue with why he doesn't like the clippers yeah i've never actually okay. used those so <laughs> I mean, that's the, I don't the have to with Azul. <laughs> that's the downside of having a poodle. But, um, I mean, he's fairly cooperative. I do have to trim the hair around his toes and his paw pads because otherwise he's slipping all over the place in public. And ice balls. Yeah, he doesn't really get ice balls there too much, although I have known dogs in this area that do, but Azul doesn't normally struggle with that. My last Pyrenees did every time we went skiing. I, one of my clients is an Aussie, and if she's outside for even like five minutes, she's getting the ice balls. All right. So next question up is, what types of cooperative care techniques have you used to try to improve the quality of care you give your dog or how they react to the care so what types what things have you tried to train with cooperative care go ahead cindy okay so the big one was getting nick so he's comfortable and cooperative with being clipped because he's a poodle and one way or another he has to get clipped Right. And so um, it's a whole process, but basically getting him comfortable on the um, grooming table. And I knew he was comfortable on the grooming table when he was loose in the backyard where I used to live. And I looked out the window and he's on top of the grooming table and I'm not out there. Right. Um, so he jumps, He if he had a dog house to jump on like Snoopy, he would be Snoopy. Um, so I knew that was good, but there was, there's been a lot of feeding on the grooming table. The other thing I did that actually has helped tremendously with cooperative care was teaching him to lay down on the grooming table with both a dog bed and a mat on the grooming table so that it's padded. Mm -hmm. And then he's a lot more cooperative with anything that has to do that might tickle like his feet his undercarriage. Basically, I when I can, I clip as much of him as I can with him laying down on the table. Right. So one of the things that that does is he doesn't have to stand on three feet when I'm doing something with his foot. So that goes a long way. Right. I definitely have my boys lay down to do their nails. Yeah, but it's not just the it's just I mean, easier, it's like, right? Yeah, right. Like, but I mean, anywhere so gets, on the leg would be easier if they were laying down. He gets a landing strip um, from his back, you know, from his back end all the way up to his chest, and so I have him lay down for that. I have him lay down to clean to clean out his underside and shave his nuts and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So that's probably been the best biggest thing, one <laughs> the biggest one and then the second it, it's between that and the scratch pad yeah because having the scratch pad it gives him the option and if I leave it out it gives him the option of just going up and doing it so I think those two things have been the thing to make life easier for everybody so for Azul, most of the things that a lot of people can consider cooperative care are just things that I've always taught in other ways. 
such as like um well for the one the 52 week challenge thing that i'm doing right now one of them was getting on the vet scales well i have my dogs get up and down off stuff all the time so oh, the scale is no different it's just a normal part of life i say up you get up you know you just do it and so yeah it's been trained with positive reinforcement and all of that good stuff but it's not specifically for in my mind cooperative care like so many other no, people do that's just, that's just something they're supposed to do in my opinion which is the same when it comes to nails i started with nails when his little was early and touching his feet and all of that stuff and you know if you if you get them as a younger puppy you have much better luck with stuff like that but i've also done stuff like the pre-muzzle training i don't even own a muzzle but i think it's good that dogs if there hasn't been a trauma with a muzzle to have that experience so that they don't stress out if need be for the vet or whatever cam yeah. was actually traumatized by a muzzle when he was younger because his previous owner um here he is a fearful people dog very fearful very reactive dog which he's a lot better now but at that point when I, he first came to me if he saw a dog at over 200 feet away he was reacting and trying to kill that dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this person put a muzzle on him and walked him through like huge events, a thousand people, you know, like oh. farmer's market craft show type events with thousands of people around because they thought that would help get him used to it. So he had a really negative experience with muzzles and just thought, oh man, that means I'm going to be terrified and He'd basically shut down, even though he would continue to walk. He wasn't enjoying. He mm -hmm. wasn't about to let his person leave him was the only reason he continued to walk. <laughs> but so when he came to me, he came with a muzzle and I threw it right in the trash just because I knew he wanted I wanted to show him this promise of, nope, we're not going to use this. This is not how we do it. But I'm not opposed to any kind of muzzle training and i actually do work with that cam has used one or two since then going to the vet because that's a little bit more nerve-wracking it smells like dogs and for vet safety i'll slide it on him there and he doesn't mind because i'll do the more you know calming communicating i keep control of his head and face so that he knows he's looking at me and he's fine and he's okay with that but Azul has never seen anything like that. So I've more or less just done, well, I've used random other things. Like when he was little, I taught him to push his nose through my hands. So if I hold my hands almost like a heart, but you know, I started out round and kind of shaped it like that. And if I put it up close to my eyes like this, he'll push his nose through and bop me in the nose. It was a game we started. So that was kind of the early one. And then I've used cones, I've used a roll of tape, I've used cups, any, you know, anything else to get him to comfortable with sliding his nose in something. And then most recently, the head halter or gentle leader that I have, we were working with that for a while as well, as far as just sticking your nose through. So right now he has a brand new harness and it slides over his head, which again he's not a real fan of he doesn't like gearing up to begin with he's fine when gear is there but he's never enjoyed putting gear on so i have no problem he just stands still and lets me do it but that is more difficult for my husband to do because of his back and hip issues and he as well as lower to him because he's six four he wants Azul to, you know, he wants to be able to hold the harness out and have Azul willingly stick his head through it, <laughs> which to a dog that doesn't really love putting it on, he doesn't want to do that. So instead, I like, I stick my hand through the head and have him give me a chin rest. And when he gives the chin rest, that's his start button or his permission to let me slide the harness over his head. And we just started working on that like three days ago. But he knows, I mean, he doesn't want it, but he knows he has to have it to go outside. So he'll stand by the door and wait and wait and wait. And I'll hold my hand out and he'll wait and wait, procrastinate. And then eventually come up and put his chin on and the harness goes on. 
And it, it takes me less than three seconds to get it on him, but it's the act of getting it on that he doesn't like. It's not the act of wearing it. Well, you know what I've done with the harness, because Nick, just for a variety of reasons, in my, room, my living room isn't that big, but for a variety of reasons, it's just easier for ha- me to have Nick jump up on the ottoman right. to get his harness on. And then it's not a big deal. No, he knows that that's what's going to happen. Right. And my husband would probably use the bed with Azul eventually, but right now Azul is not at the point that he wants to cooperate. So he only will really allow the harness to go on is when he's at the door ready to go. He wants to have it on at the door. He doesn't want to have it on a moment before, and he wants to have it on just before he goes out. And then he's totally fine with it. So. And it looks like Lily doesn't like the file board. Yeah. I've never tried a file board per se. But that's like I've the seen them. Part. I know what it is. Yeah. I've just I've never tried it because my dogs do well with the Dremel. I have both clippers and Dremel for nails. And I use a little bit of both. So depending on how big yeah. the nails are. But I, neither- I just wanted to comment on the muzzle and the Mm -hmm. muzzle training because it is important um i forgot what exactly happened with my friend's dog but she had something and it was going to be a cone of shame or something that she had to wear and she wasn't leaving the area alone and my friend's mom suggested well why don't you just put her muzzle on issue solved It, it was like a cut or I think it was something that she had to have stitches on or something gotcha. and so they put the muzzle on the dog's used to wearing the muzzle because she's been muzzle trained and so then she can't mess with the air the so the area that's the problem so it, okay. it you know there's so many uses for a muzzle besides what most people think of when they think of muzzles Right. Even a dog that is well bonded to a person, if they get stuck and are feeling confined and trapped, and that person may be trying to free them and trying to help them out, those dogs do turn and bite. So, oh, yeah. I, I carry a muzzle with me for that reason. I don't like how it fits, and I'm looking for a different one. But I've never personally had that problem, but I've seen it happen time and time again with other people. And I mean, that's the last time I actually got bit by a dog. It was because I was separating it off of Azul when Azul was younger. And they were fine greeting through the fence. So we were trying to greet on the same side and off leash. But the other dog didn't like us coming through the gate, apparently, (laughs) because that's when he pinned Azul. So Ashlyn said something about, no, I, I mean, with the harness. Right. After the file board. That's what she was so talking, we talking about. We were talking about Lily or um, Azul not liking to necessarily get the, the harness, harness over on. his head. Yep. And she has trained with oh. a file board. Yeah. My head is kind of like all over the place tonight. So I think we have one more question. Oh, yeah. Unless there's something else that you guys want to talk about different things you've tried with cooperative care. If there's another no. thing. All right. Do you have something so. else, Ash- Ashlyn? Do you have something else? No. Okay. okay. So the other question, and this might just be from one of my you know, one of my big trainers, but are you guys familiar with the term start button? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do a really brief explanation just in case somebody's watching this later and is not familiar. So I was describing how I'm working on Azul with the harness and how he does the chin rest to initiate the harness. So that's another thing that's really common with cooperative care. It's called a start button. It doesn't have to be a chin rest. That's just what I used for Azul. If you search the word bucket game in dog training, you'll probably see it. 
They do this with horses and dogs, both where like the dog, as long as their paw or their nose or whatever body part you've conditioned is touching the bucket, you have their permission to do whatever care it is that you're working on. And then as soon as they pick their body part up, you stop and you wait until they put their body part back. And so that's basically a start button. It's the permission to continue. But I tweak that a little bit with, um, you know, my dogs know do the button to start the activity kind of thing. And we do it in more than just cooperative care, but I don't make them hold it because that could be more uncomfortable for them. And I want them to be comfortable and relaxed. They yeah, have other ways of communicating to me that, no, I need a break, stop. So mm -hmm. I don't use it quite like most other people do. But so the question is, I got to switch back over to that screen real quickly, if I can. Uh, I just lost it. <laughs> I clicked in the wrong place. Give me just a minute to get back there. All right. So the question is, if you've used start buttons behaviors, what is your start button and what behavior do you have the dog to do to that button? I don't really have a start button. Okay. Do you do something instead? Um, well, if we're going to go do something like say I'm going to do something on the grooming table the grooming tables in a certain area I open the door and generally he knows if he gets up there that there's that, fair game something's going to happen right and there. the grooming something, table is basically a start button for you in that fashion button. right and then the same thing with the um scratch pad the scratch pad if I pull it out and I sit by where the scratch pad is and I bring the treats over he has the option that's 100% his option. He does not have to be near the scratch pad or, and actually what usually happens is when Poe's over here, Poe is trying to push him out of the way because she wants to earn all the treats. Right. <laughs> so um, there's a little bit of, you know, stuff going on. To, like yeah. he's gonna get what when and you know she's twice his size so she can push him out very easily my dog just has that to, sorry didn't mean to cut you off i was gonna say she just has to get her nose in there and he's <laughs> getting pushed over yeah my dogs do that whenever scott's rubbing one of them if one of them's getting a rub, you know, a good old scratch, because he scratches the hardest and best in the house. So mm -hmm. if he's getting a deep itch, the other one will go over and kind of push him out. And they go back and forth and back and forth and laugh. And it's like, they tried to get me to do it. I'm like, nope, I don't play that game. <laughs> but Nick's not very cuddly or doesn't like to be touched much. So care cooperative care can be difficult with him. It can also be challenging when a dog is not food motivated. Because yes, well, that's also part of his issue. It, if you think about it, like for the longest time, for months and months and months, Azul's high level motivation was tug. So imagine how mm -hmm. long that takes to trim nails if you have to do a nail and a tug and a nail and a tug and a nail and a tug. <laughs> you know, so that I mean, was I, one of the reasons. For going with the scratch board because he'll paw and take a take a uh, and take a treat and paw and I've got him to you know build up that desire to paw a little bit more and that they get a certain amount of reward from scratching too right it's, it's like digging so you get a certain amount of natural reward from that so it's helpful but the other thing that has helped reduce the amount of um of need for um doing his nails was when we were walking to, you know up to two miles every day mm -hmm. on asphalt it kept his nails nice well now we're not walking right now because i don't know what's happening with me and 
so he's his nails are growing yep winter time here i definitely have to clip nails more often in the winter in the summer yeah. they do enough running and walking on hard surfaces even playing ball in our driveway and yard for cam keeps his nails worn down quite nicely yeah but in the winter playing on snow doesn't quite do it <laughs> no but it really makes a difference when you're out on concrete or asphalt versus when you're on carpet all the time. Right. Ashlyn, do you ever use start buttons in your training? I would like to work more with start buttons than what I have, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I have naturally built them into some things without really thinking about it. But, oh, and she says not really to the using start, start buttons. Button. What? I Go ahead. I think that as we train more and become better trainers, we can tease out, oh, like, I don't think of the table as a start button, but you can tease it out. Oh, that really is a start button. And right. I think you can tease those things. You can actually, as you start working, as you start looking at what you're training and how you're training it, you start teasing out what is or is not, or, you know, or, or a setup behavior, you know, say you want to start behavior um, like having them touch your hand for something else um, to say, okay, we're going to start training now and you have them touch your hand um, for a, a conversation starter of we're going to start working now. Right. I think the more, the more we train, the more we learn about this, the more we just automatically do it. I used a start button behavior type thing to help expand Azul's knowledge of, you know, the on-off switch kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, basically this was in a super tug motivated days, but I have, well, his mats that he rests on in the house, or I have one sized for public is um, a yoga mat that is cut up into three different mats. So I have three mm -hmm. different things. Well, there's this teeny tiny little strip left over so it's roughly maybe three inches wide at most. And, you know, as, as long as a yoga mat is wide, so about two and a half, three feet. And so I would put that down in the middle of the floor in my training room and have the tug rope. And every now and then I would disengage. And he knew the way to get me to re-engage with that tug rope was to go step on this, you know, thin strip mm -hmm. of a mat. And so he would hold there and hold there and hold there and not move off the mat until I re-engaged with the tug. So I was able to, you know, add time with that kind of start button. Okay, mm -hmm. you're doing what you want. You're doing what I want. I know what you want. It's a clear signal and we're good to go. And mm -hmm. it just, it worked really well. He's got one of like the best on-off switches I've seen. And Ashlyn did say that she probably uses a start button at bath time. And that's kind of it. I think we don't realize how much we actually do stuff like that. Yeah, well, it becomes a natural part of your training. The more you train, the more things just become organic to your training. Right. The same can be said, you know, with reinforcement or mm -hmm. enrichment. I don't think of everything I do with Azul as enrichment because we do so much enrichment, you know, with the sniffy yeah. walks and the outside time and the find it games and the, it's just a part of daily life here. <laughs> and, you know, it's like a sniffy walk doesn't have to be a 10 mile sniff about. It could be five minutes at the showgrounds when you're trying to give them an idea of what's going on and let them check out the p-mail real quick before you go back in and do your class and just so they have an idea of who's there what's right. going on and I don't think you know I think when people think enrichment they think something 
you got to go take your dog out for a 20 minute fetch session. And right. that's not necessarily what it is. I think that we all kind of, you know, those of us that train more advanced dogs, we, we just slide everything into, this is just life, you know? <laughs> The dog trainer in us wants to be able to categorize it and say, well, this fits here and that fits there, but not everything fits into the box as nicely as it should. Yeah. And, you know, it's especially for those of us with service dogs that take our dogs everywhere, it does become part of your lifestyle because if it doesn't, you can't take your dog everywhere. Right. The dog won't behave appropriately. And not only a matter of behaving, but if you're going to take your dog everywhere, you know they got to be groomed appropriately, clean, as little hair as possible. Um, I think I just froze. So it makes more sense to co have them cooperate. Right. You froze. I did. <laughs> I did. And I came back. And we are almost out of time. Do yes. either of you have anything else you want to add about cooperative care? I think that ba bathing and nails are probably the two biggest issues people have. I think so, too. I would agree with that. Most people struggle with one or the other or both. Mm -hmm. And both of them can be very difficult to calm a dog, especially one that's not food motivated. Yep. And if it's fear, fear mm -hmm. involved with that, whatever it is you're trying to do makes it much worse too. Yeah. And if you have a dog like mine that can't be in the, that has to be in the ba bath once a week, it's much harder to work with them on those fear issues in the bathtub. Right. All right. Let's wrap it up. Uh, we're almost out of time. I wanna okay. Thank you guys both for coming. Let's see well, what we you. can do to get some more participation next week. Well, hopefully Christy will be coming. We're switching our Tuesday afternoon meeting until uh, to Fridays. Oh, okay. So she should be good to come Tuesday evenings because I know she gets really tired. Right. Her issues. I know that evenings works best for some and then not so well for others. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll work it out. Yep. And so everybody have a good night. And we'll look at the the um poll on the working dot pause page and see what's the highest one for next week all right have a good all evening right. thanks everybody good night thank you bye ashlyn bye penny bye ashlyn bye cindy